The Apiaceae, or Parsley family, one of the most well-marked and distinctive families of them all. They just have this aspect. To me, it looks like, man, they could have come in from another planet or something. I love how distinctive they are. Um, what about them? Well, Apiaceae, the genus that it's named after is Apium, which is celery. And if you think of a stalk of celery, you kind of get an idea of one of the characteristics of the Apiaceae. Their stems tend to be um, grooved and kind of juicy and um, sometimes very aromatic, the plants are. They're um, exclusively herbaceous plants. Um, as you will see, this inflorescence type, the umbel, is very distinctive. Um, not only found in the Apiaceae, but m nearly all members of the Apiaceae have small flowers that are white or yellow in um, these compound umbels. The leaves, the leaves are, typ are typically compound with these leaf bases that sheathe the stem in a very distinctive manner. So how does the um, Apiaceae differ from the primitive features of the Finch flower? Um, what's its claim to fame for being modified? Well, it's epigenous, it has an inferior ovary. We'll see that shortly. Um, a lot of the members of the um, Apiaceae, well, let me backtrack a little bit. A lot of spices are members of the Apiaceae. They have this these very pungent um, oils in them that give them uh, flavor and aroma. Some of them, however, are deadly poisonous, so you have to be really careful if you ever sample um, wild-growing members of the Apiaceae. Here's my favorite spice company, the McCormick Spice Company, that has these very anatomically correct spices. And yeah, I love this. Look at this celery seed. It's got a picture that you could even recognize that it's a member of the Apiaceae with an umbel and those compound leaves. And look at this cumin seed. Um, you can tell that those are umbels, and you can even make out those are schizocarps. Uh, pretty distinctive. So here's a beautiful characteristic umbel of a member of the Apiaceae. This is, in fact, um, what's called Queen Anne's Lace. The scientific name of Queen Anne's Lace is Dalcus Carota, and somewhere in that specific epithet is the word carrot, because Queen Anne's Lace is also called wild carrot, and this is the wild plant that carrot is um, derived from. So the tap root is um, um, not a very juicy thing in the wild plant, but if you were to pull it up and break it, or even scratch and stiff some parts of the stem, you'd definitely get a carrot aroma. Queen Anne's Lace um, has a very distinctive compound umbel, an umbel is an inflorescence where flowers are stalked and all attached at one point. But in, the, in m most members of the Apiaceae, the umbels are compound. So we have little umbels that are all connected together to make one big umbel. And um, leaves, reduced leaves that are subtend inflorescences, um, they're called sometimes called bracts. Um, B R A C T. And plural s and in the apiaceae the there's a series of bracts um, that are um, sometimes present it's called an involucra a series of circle of bracts that subtends a bunch of flowers and in some members of the apiaceae they're pretty elaborate like in this queen anne's lace and others they're simpler and they can be useful for identification it's a kind of challenging group to identify some members of so here's a picture of a insect visiting, it's a fly I guess, visiting the flowers of cow parsnip. And these flowers have five part, part uh, symmetry with separate um, petals. The sepals are very, very small. You can't really make them out. And these flowers look a tiny bit zygomorphic, but that's just because of the, the periphery of the umbel. They're basically actinomorphic, radially symmetric. And the flower color is not very variable in the Apiaceae. They're typically, um, well, white or yellow. Not much, not many instances of anything different than that. So here's a large and lovely member of the Apiaceae that's flowering now. You can see little two or three individuals along roadsides in damp, um, wooded areas. And it's a really big plant, cow parsnip, Heracleum maximum. And it's got these Apiaceae characteristics, uh, compound umbels of small white flowers, compound leaves with um, uh, 
a base that she's the stem. That's a herbaceous plant with a hollow stem with grooves along it. Cow parsnip. Here's a picture that shows the close-up of one of the umbellettes of cow parsnip. And most of these are tiny bit past flowering, which is helpful in order to see the ovary. So right here where I draw this line um, is where the petals were attached. And notice that the ovary is below that. This, this plant has an inferior ovary. You could be a little fooled by this swollen top of the, uh, well, base of the style, little stylopodium. That's not the ovary. That's just part of the stigma and style. Um, the ovary is definitely on the bottom. This is an epigenous flower with an inferior ovary. It's kind of been a little bit of an advancement. And um, here's a very here's another picture of that uh, Queen Anne's lace, a wild carrot. Wild carrot has uh, leaves that are pinnately compound, a little bit incised, the leaflets are, so it looks kind of lacy, hence the name, Queen Anne's Lace. And it's a common roadside weed, um, flowers in mid to late summer, it's like a July thing. Um, in this picture, by the way, it's being shown with bird's foot trefoil in the fabulous Fabaceae. This is another instance of a wild uh, relative slash ancestor of a horticultural, I mean, excuse me, an agricultural, this is wild parsnip. This is the wild version of the same exact species that the variety that has really thick roots is parsnip. It's called Pastanaca sativa. Sativa means edible or something similar to that. It has yellow flowers. It doesn't have uh, an involucra. I just drew one. Now it does. Haha. <laughs> And um, one of the things about wild parsnip that's noteworthy is that it causes um, a kind of dermatitis, but only in combination with the sun. It's called phytophotodermatitis, which means that if you got the juice of this plant on your skin in really shady conditions or like at night, no prob, but combine it with the sunlight and it's said to cause a severe-ish dermatitis. There's a... Um, a kind of well-known but not very common um, giant hogweed plant that causes very severe dermatitis. Um, so we have to be a little careful with members of the APACE. Ah, this is a lovely spring wildflower. It flowers really, really early. In fact, I think it might be better to consider it a winter wildflower. Hmm. Spring wildflower? I'll have to check the date. It's called Harbinger of Spring. Um, Originia bulbosa. Sometimes it's called salt and pepper because the sort of nice color contrast between the petals and the stamens have this sort of variegated appearance. And it's easy to not notice because it sprouts up between the leaves on the forest floor and um, it's very inconspicuous. But it's a lovely native wildflower, harbinger of spring. Here's one called Sweet Sicily. There's actually two species and they have a nice fragrance. They smell like um, licorice, sort of an anise scent. And here we see the, uh, the typical APACE features. The flowers are in compound umbels. The leaves are compound. And um, this is a picture of Sweet Sicily after it's flowering. And the fruits are partly developed. I mean, they're, they're somewhat mature. Recall, um, or learn for the first time, that the fruits of the APACE are schizocarps. So this ovary has two chambers in it, but instead of splitting open to release the seeds, it splits into two one-seeded units um, that would kind of look like achenes. It's a split fruit. So here's Sweet Sicily before this stage of development. So the fruit splits into two one-seeded units. It's a schizocarp. Here's a very, very common and abundant wildflower in woods. It's called sanicle, um, sometimes called one of many plants that are called snake root. Sanicle doesn't immediately present itself as a member of the Apiaceae because the umbels are very, very small. Um, and the flowers are so small that you might not realize it's flowering when it is. And it's super abundant in the woods right now, in fact. This is a close-up of two species of this genus, Sinicula, 
and um, I forget what two species they are, but um, what's noteworthy about them is that they kind of an unusual flower st structure. The umbels um, consist of two different types of flowers. They're unisexual, which is unusual for the Apiaceae, and these big ones with the bristles on them are the female female flowers, and these ones that are just right now all you see is is the remnants of the calyx. Those are the male flowers. So to have unisexual flowers in the same cluster, it's kind of a unique thing. And this is um, what is commonly called sanicle in the genus Sanicula. Here's a lovely native wildflower that grows in fens. This is taken at Cedar Bog that isn't a bog, it's a fen. And it's called cowbane. Um, look at the nice compound umbel, the white, small white flowers. We don't have any noticeable uh, involucral bracts in this species. The leaves can vary from being very narrow to sort of thicker. They're pinnately compound. This is another one that doesn't look very umbel-ish. It's uh, called Rattlesnake Master, and it has basically um, a capitulum type of inflorescence. All the flowers are attached to basically one spot without stalks. If they had stalks, it would look like an umbel. Without stalks, it looks like a head. It's called Rattlesnake Master. It's a lovely prairie plant. This is a wetland plant called Angelica. It's Angelica atropurpurea. Atropurpurea means very purple. And it has these big globose compound umbels and very large purple stems. And look at these huge leaves. They're twice uh, palmately compound. And again, the base of the leaf is very, very expanded and partly she's the stem. The stem is hollow um, and uh, it's herbaceous, a little stiff. This is a, this is a plant that's taller than, taller than me. It's a nice wetland plant. Uh, about the weeds. Um, this is a very well-known and um, very, very, very poisonous um, member of the Apiaceae, probably our most poisonous plant. One bite, you're dead. Um, it's called poison hemlock, conium maculatum, and it's very, 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 very common and abundant, uh, especially along roadsides all across Ohio. It's a June thing. Um, contrast that with um, Queen Anne's lace, which is uh, more of a July thing, but otherwise they're sort of similar. Poison hemlock's much, much taller and grows in vast swaths. Um, let's take a look at a comparison shot. On the left, uh, this is here, um, is Queen Anne's lace, wild carrot. The leaves are more um, simple in there, the way in which they're in which they're divided, um, more pinnate with the, some some incisions in the leaflets, and also hairy. On the right is poison hemlock, which is um, more um, lacy. Uh, the leaflets are fully and completely divided, and then the sub-leaflets are divided. It's um, not hairy, it's glabrous. So the leaves do look sort of different. Um, here's the stems of poison hemlock. The specific epithet maculatum means spotted, and they are indeed spotted. The um, stem actually is um, what's called glaucus. Glaucus means having a powdery bloom that you can rub off with your thumb or any other appendage. You might want to use your finger, use your nose, I don't care. Um, but the point is you can rub off this powdery bloom, and that glaucus characteristic. The spots stay, though. This is the uh, compound umbel of poison hemlock. Contrast that with the Queen Anne's lace that we saw earlier. The involucra of Queen Anne's lace is very pectinate, like a comb, and these are very simple and small. So there's a lot of differences between poison hemlock, very deadly poisonous, um, to eat. Um, touching it, I'm not so sure, but people like to stay away from it no matter what. It has a peculiar rank odor. It kind of gives you the creeps. Poison hemlock is uh, um, uh, bad weed in roadsides and, and uh, deadly poison. So there's some story about hemlock. I'm not uh, an expert in history and philosophy, but my understanding is that the famous... Uh, thinker and philosopher Socrates was condemned to death by drinking uh, a potion of poison hemlock. And this is a famous, I guess, painting of him. And what he's said to be saying 
to um, his friend, I guess, Crito, we owe a cock to Asclepius. Um, the rooster would be a reward for um, the the prospect of dying painlessly, I guess, but I don't think it's painless. But here's, here's why this is supposed to be funny. Very inside joke. Um, Asclepius, who is some kind of god of medicine, I suppose, also happens to be the genus name for milkweeds, my favorite plants. So um, when when Socrates said this, perhaps his friend said, why are you talking about milkweed? Hmm. Um, I think I need a laugh track. <laughs> so what have you learned about the APACE? Um, some things that are shown very nicely in this little icon by Roger Tory Peterson. Look, it's this compound umbel. This family used to be called, it has an alternative familiar name other than the A-C-E-A-E -E -E ending. It's been called the umbelliferae, which means umbel bearing. Here's the umbel, and here's the umbel, the A-P-A-C-E, the parsley family.